Welcome back to this module on file IO. In this part, we'll cover file input. There are many, mostly dangerous, ways of reading from a file. The best practice is to use methods that limit the amount of data that's read so that the behavior is predictable. Far too many programs don't do this and allow the processing of arbitrarily large amounts of data, leading to buffer overflows and security issues. We'll focus on the two most useful and safe functions fgetc, which allows you to read a single character from a file, and fgets, or forgets, which reads up to an entire line from a file at a time. fgetc has the following signature. It reads a single char file from a file f and returns the ASCII value of the character read from f. It automatically advances the file pointer f to the next character in the file. It also returns a special flag value, eof, when it reaches the end of the file so that you know when to stop. Let's take a look. First, let's open up that CSV file that we were looking at before. We'll open it up for reading. This gets the first character in the file. Now we don't know how many characters are in the file up front, so it's more appropriate to use a simple while loop here. While the character that we've read so far is not the end of file character, we'll go ahead and process the character, and by process I simply mean print it out for now. And then we need to set ourselves up for the next iteration of this loop by getting the next character. When it reaches the end of the file, EOF will be returned and will break out of this while loop. Don't forget to close. Just to remind you, this is the contents of this student CSV file. and it successfully reads every character in the file, including punctuation, numbers, and white space. Forgets, or fgets, has the following signature. It takes three arguments and reads at most size minus one characters from the file f, placing the result into the first string argument. Typically, this is referred to as a buffer. Forgets always reads one less than the size parameter in order to be able to fit the null terminating character, which it automatically inserts for you. It stops early if the endline character is encountered, so again it reads at most size minus one bytes. It can, and certainly will, often read fewer bytes. Moreover, Forgets retains the endline character in the resulting string. If you don't want this, you'll need to manually chomp it out. The return pointer value is used to signal when it reaches the end of the file. It returns null when it does. Alternatively, for both of these, fgetc and fgets, you can use another function, feof, to determine if the pointer has reached the end of the file or not. Let's take a look. Let's read that same student CSV file, but line by line. To read an entire line, I'll need a buffer. Now my design decision here has an important assumption. It's assuming that no line is more than 99 characters long. If that's not the case, if you've got long lines in your file, you may need to come up with a more sophisticated solution. I'm calling forgets to read at most 99 characters, 99 because it needs room for that null terminating character, from f and placing the result into s, my buffer. I'm using the return value here to determine whether or not I should stop.
I process the line. Here I'm just printing it out again. And then I set myself up for the next loop by calling forgets again. Don't forget to close your file. Now it's double spaced here because when I read each line, it retained the end line character. Let's go back and change that. I'll want to remove the very last character in the line that I read if it's an end line character. First, I get the length of the string because if there's an end line character, it'll be the very last character. Chomping it out simply means replacing it with the null terminating character. And now we don't have that end line character in each of these strings. It's going to the next line because that's how I'm actually printing it. Now you can imagine a more sophisticated solution. For example, iterating through each one of these, tokenizing them, and then handling each token separately.